Hola amigos, soy Joseph Novak. We're going to look at some of the things that led to the development of concept mapping. Concept mapping was developed by a research group in the 1970s and it is based on a theory of knowledge and a theory of learning. One of the ideas in the theory of knowledge is that all knowledge is made up of building blocks we call concepts. And concepts combine to form propositions. So the two building blocks in knowledge are concepts and propositions. We define concept as a perceived regularity or pattern in events or objects or records of events or objects designated by some label. Words are usually the labels we use for concepts, but it could be symbols too, like plus and minus and sigma. Propositions are two concepts combined together to form some statement or some idea. Propositions are really the units of meaning what we store in our head is not isolated concepts, but concepts and relationships or propositions. Now, these are the building blocks of knowledge, but they are also the foundation for learning. And concept maps are a way to represent the structure of knowledge that we have learned and hold in our head, or the structure of knowledge that exists in a textbook or a syllabus. Here is a concept map on concept maps. And one of the things you could see in this is that concept maps are context dependent because depending on how you want to use your knowledge or how you are constructing your knowledge will shape the meanings of the concepts. You see also that concept maps combine concepts and propositions in a hierarchical order. And we think this is important because we think our brain stores knowledge as hierarchies, not as linear strings. Here is a map that combines a flow chart on the left side with a concept map on the right side. There are many ways to represent knowledge and concept maps are only one of them. For example, if we were trying to show how to get to different cities in Colombia, we would not use a concept map, but we would use a road map or some other kind of map of cities. Similarly, if we're trying to describe the steps in building a concept map, a flow chart such as you see here on the left would be a good way to describe the steps to making a concept map. Now, concept maps are based on a new way of thinking about knowledge and learning. And this new way is called constructivism. It's based on the idea that human beings construct their own knowledge, and each person must construct their own knowledge in their head. You cannot give a learner or another person a knowledge structure. They have to build it. We call this view of knowledge constructivism. An older view of knowledge and creation of knowledge was that knowledge is discovered. And if you look under the right covers, you can find new knowledge and this new knowledge would be truth and it would last forever. This positivistic view of knowledge as immutable truth is pretty much dying away now as we begin to see that all knowledge, because it's a human construction, changes over time. Now, it doesn't change so rapidly that we have trouble learning uh, on, on the basis of old knowledge. One of the fundamental ideas in learning is that every learner builds on what they already know. This is an idea that's pretty universally accepted now. 
Learning does not occur by this model where information is poured into a learner's head. Although many teachers and professors in universities teach as though learning was filling an empty vessel. Instead, our brain processes knowledge and it has to process it through three different memory systems, eventually building knowledge structures in long-term memory. And it must build this knowledge by interacting between the new knowledge and the old knowledge in working memory. The working memory allows only about seven pieces of knowledge to be processed at a time. So it's a very small gate that we have to get through to get into long-term memory. Concept mapping helps facilitate meaningful learning of knowledge and the incorporation of knowledge into long-term memory. Here's a concept map uh, of children working on different kinds of animals in Costa Rica. Now these were three-year-old children and so they are using pictures of animals rather than words. But the animal pictures show the kind of regularities that they're beginning to understand for the concept of animal. This slide shows four-year-old children in a school in Costa Rica building a concept map of relationships, showing parents and aunts and uncles, and they're not only learning the names of these relationships in Spanish, but also in English. And this concept map is shown in English. Now, the learning theory that has guided our research and helped us to create concept maps is the learning theory of David Ausubel. And there are several principles in Ausubel's theory, but the most important idea is the difference between rote learning and meaningful learning. In rote learning, information is taken in by the learner, but it is not processed together with existing knowledge and new knowledge structures are not built in rote learning. Only meaningful learning leads to the building of new knowledge structures. And this diagram, we see that there is a continuum from very rote learning, the, just the form of memorizing that occurs in so many classrooms, to very meaningful learning. In order to be a very meaningful learner, you must have some prior knowledge and you must have a commitment to say, how can I relate what I already know to this new knowledge? How can I integrate the new knowledge into the knowledge I have? That takes an effort on the part of the learner, but the reward is that much more powerful knowledge structures are built. Memorizing, on the other hand, does not build knowledge structures, and I'm sure many of you have had the experience of studying some things and memorizing some information, and a year later, or even a month later, it's all gone. 